Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I've uh, got a, a, a brief video I'm going to put together here looking at disappearing creases or disappearing edges on surfaces where you have a couple of surfaces mate and the, the angle between them basically uh, derives down to zero and therefore the edge looks like it disappears. Okay, so I've put together a number of examples here, just a bit of an exploration. Um, I'm not going to model anything live, just for the sake of time. So I'll just flick through files and just sort of cover a few things. So this is a, the first version. It's a um, pretty simple extruded version. So I've created a first surface which is just an extrude, then I've offset a plane, I've created a second surface which has our crease in it. As you can see here the crease is 3 degrees on either side, so these lines are controlling the arc tangency, the 3 plus 3 is 6. And then created some 3D sketches here and here to join the two. Um, I made them as splines in case I ended up moving one of these pieces. It would remain curved to continuous. You could just use a line because these are collinear. And then this one's very simple. Just created a loft between the two. So in one direction we have the uh, the edge uh, where the edge of the surface where this uh, edge runs out into nothing and on the other side using selection manager I've picked the two edges here of the surface and and in this instance I managed to make them curved continuous and then second direction two 3D sketches that I mentioned before and those together we'll turn our edges off so you can see there the edge is running down into nothing, terminating by the time it gets to the surface. If I put edges and turn deviation analysis on, you can see there 6 degrees for the green arrows, and then from this point onwards, which is the end of that extruded surface, it starts running down to zero as these arrows converge. Yeah, and then I've just thickened it at the end there because SOLIDWORKS sometimes your mesh under tools, options, document properties, image quality, what you do here sometimes isn't reflected in a surface model and you have to solidify it. It may reflect the change here but then you rebuild something and it will go back to a fairly low res mesh. I'll just show you a zebra too. Okay, so you can see that that's what's going on there. Right, I'm going to jump on to my second version. Which is a similar thing, except making uh, like an S bend. You know, if you wanted a, um, a double curved spline connection. So, in this case, I have scroll back. Everything's much the same, except I've off that this edge down towards one side. And I've created a 3D sketch, which is a face curve uh, on this other surface. And then I've created a 3D sketch between the two, which is curvature continuous. The degree 5. Degree 5. Bezier. Alice Blind. And then I've treated this pretty much the same way, except with this loft now. I've added that spline in as an extra guide curve. So it's fairly subtle, but you can see it disappearing there. Deviates from 6 through to 2.6 in the middle and then 0 on this end.
Okay, next version. Okay, this one was a failure. I was trying to make this more um, abrupt, you know. Just roll through it. Okay, so much more abrupt. And much more curvature change in the spline. And I tried adding lofts along that curve to control the control the um the angle between the, the, the edges so so the these ones you can see here I've got 75s, 177. Sorry, wrong one. Oh, sorry, 179, right? So 180 means those would be uh, collinear, so I've got one degree of angle change across the. Uh, across the edge there. So the idea is that you build a surface here and it's tangent to this surface. And on this side, you build a surface that's tangent to this surface. And then you can you can twist this uh, ribbon surface control to try and control things. But as it turned out, I was over defining it. I hadn't actually defined this in a very nice way. Because my heights sort of wobble all over the show. Uh, it doesn't really follow the general uh, flow of these surfaces. So when I put the boundary surfaces in, you know, they can't, there's dips and you can see there, this is dipping here. You could put sections in here to try and bring that up, but then I thought, oh, I could spend quite a lot of time um, trying to figure this out. So I thought it'd be a better way to do that. So that's the next version here. Try and simplify. So again, quite an abrupt curvature change on the spline. But I'll roll back and show you what I did that was different. So this time around, I built surface from this edge to this edge here, which is this boundary surface here. I've overbuilt a surface, curved continuous on each end, haven't bothered with second direction because I want this side here just to flow naturally. And then I've created my sketch, like which is going to be the actual edge and I've trimmed the surface back. So now I know this surface here doesn't have any funny height undulations and what have you. And the spline actually rises up higher and then down again to work with the curvature of this face and this face, rather than what was happening before with my spline wandering up and down. Okay. have created a like a ribbon surface like I said before that is controlled I can control this line is one degrees off the tangency from this edge using an intersection curve so I can control that um that surface as it goes across Okay, we'll just nut those together and thicken them so we can have a lot, turn the edges off. Yeah, so this surface here, there probably will be some almost negative curvature or something through here potentially, but a much nicer result than, than previous uh, example. Uh, 
Okay, move on to the next. Right, this was, instead of trying to do things that are fairly straightforward as far as like they're extruded, this is the double curved surface. So I started by creating a sweep, which is simple, um, an arc swept along a uh, degree two spline, style spline. Then I've drawn a line on a plane, a spline, where I want the edge to go. And I've extruded that surface, created a 3D sketch intersection where surfaces meet, and then created a swept pipe along that spline, the intersection. And then I've untrimmed this end and extended this end of the pipe and then used the pipe as a trim tool to trim out the center of this um, loop surface. Leaves us with this. Okay. And at this end I've created a section with our crease or our edge control with the angle so I've got seven degrees of um, angle change between the, the two arcs there. I'm just using arcs I'm not trying to make this all curvature continuous just for the sake of time and you can if you if you need to and then I've just created a loft along there and because the loft goes from this angled sketch, sketch with the angle change in it through to this end here, which is the original um, arc that was used to sweep this main primary surface. And loft profiles at each end. Oh, sorry, profiles are um, these edges. And I don't have a center profile uh, control. I've just allowed the computer to figure out blending between this end and this end as guide curves. So let's have a look, see what it looks like. Okay. And you can see it deviates from about 7 down to 0. So that worked okay. I thought, okay, next thing to do would be to try and do this, except with a piece of geometry here. So I don't know what this looks like out here, you know. I don't know how successful it would be. So let's jump onto version 6. Which is, as you can see, it's a localised edge. So again, I've created a swept surface and then drawn the line that is my, the um, sketch that is my edge, extruded that through the primary surface, created an intersection curve again, and then created a pipe on along that. Uh, extended this end to, to make sure it, it um, past the end of our primary surface and then I've created a planar surface to cap this end of the pipe knit that together and trimmed out the area where the where the edge is going uh, plane on this end and our control sketch for the again very similar to the last example and then I've created a loft hang on I think on this one I tried it with the boundary surface yes I did Okay, so very similar to the previous version where there's just two curves or profiles in each direction and the computer I've allowed it to decide where the centre line goes and tangent on three boundaries. Let's have a look what that looks like.
That seems to have worked all right. Seems like the there's a risk sometimes when you're building edges like this that the um the edge which is convex can deviate and become concave in sections, like especially through here, uh, which means you have to introduce more controls to it. But this seems to be deviating nicely, as you can see that the arrows are, are slowly converging, and they never cross each other the other direction. Okay. So once I've done this, I figured this is actually cheating because this is actually cheating because uh, there's a bit of a curvature hump here because we've got this arc and then we're introducing a a, um, a different curve here. Where in reality, something like this would probably be built from with a single curve from here to here and here to here. So my next that was my next next trial. Oh, hang on. No, sorry. This is this, this is just a more accentuated version of the previous. There you go. I can you can see what I mean. But the curvature. This is just a more accentuated version of the previous one. I've really tried to make that edge, you know, stand out. I mean, this this trimming it into a main surface like this, it's kind of. I don't know, it's not cheating, but it, 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 it sort of gives quite a smooth result because most of the surface surrounding it is pre-built. Yeah. Right, I'll move on to the other one I was going to explain. So this one here, as you can see, I haven't cut it into uh, the main sweep. I've made the sweep first and then done some other things. I made a ruled surface along along this surface here, along the primary surface, and then tried creating a spline like from this curve here, which is an extension of this. So I basically want to make the the edge move smoothly, as you can see, from one end to the other wasn't very successful to be honest I think it's just one of those things you could spend hours working on it or well, not hours but a lot more time and lost and what have you but I couldn't for the life of me I'll show you couldn't for the life of me get rid of these wrinkles on the surface down here and I'm not sure, because this, this edge here is basically a um, converted entity of the original swept edge. So that's, the curvature along here should be the same all the way along, um, same at the top. So it must just be the spline here. I tried a version with changing the angle here, so the surface ends on an angle, so the CVs aren't sort of squashed up into this corner. Again, had the same thing with this um, with this wrinkling. Boundary surface is worse, um, much worse. You get all sorts of wrinkling along here. I dropped this into Rhino, um, rebuilt it successfully, quite easily. Um, the spline deviates from this one here that I've created a bit. It's a bit fuller in the middle, but um, I don't see why that would again make this. This problem here with the wrinkles. I've actually got a section through the middle here to, to reduce some of that wrinkling as well. Yeah, and right now I just made it with edge surface and mat, used match surface to match each end. I got it within 0.05 degrees tangency. So, yeah. Okay, and this is another version of this. And you can see what I'm sort of talking about here with some of this funkiness. Yeah, but the actual theory of doing it this way, I don't see the problem with it. So, yeah, basically disappearing edge. You're going from um, two surfaces with an angle difference between them, and you're basically picking a line where it's uh, where the edge is going to go, and use that as a profile to blend into the surface at the other end, which doesn't have a angle break in it. Okay, I've got one more example, which is different again. 
Okay, so this is some ambiguous blob shape. I don't know, a handle, a lamp, a razor, who knows? It's just a sort of shape I created to um, maybe show a bit more of a potential usage case for. Okay, so I've created these blinds, the right hand plane, and then created planes at the top and bottom where I've added an end section. In this case, this is an arc. And with the arc, I've added two profiles here, which are lines. Added another plane at the top there. And added another arc there. The arcs are normal to the center line. And I've created a loft. That's the surface where the crease, the crease ends by the time it reaches the surface. And the crease, as you can see, starts down on this end. At that point. And again, this is just a couple of arcs um, that are normal to the center line. And I've created on the side elevation the the line I want the crease to follow. Then I've extruded that out. And extended the bottom here because I'm now going to draw the profile that I want it to follow from the front elevation. So I've created an intersection sketch between these faces because I need to draw tangency off this line. So my curve for the, because um, I'm, I'm explicitly defining the, the, the crease line rather than letting the computer blob it, blob it, blend it together, I need to draw tangency, make sure it's tangent at this point to that surface on the, following that line. Okay, so there's my front elevational spline. Then I've extruded that and created a 3D, set, 3D sketch and intersection between these two faces. And okay, so then I've created these surfaces on the sides. They're boundary surfaces with three curves in one direction. I've put this curve in here to control um, control the angle of the edge here because the crease was actually inverting. I'll show you that in a second, how you can sort of identify that problem. So normal to profile on the centre and tangent to our top surface. And then the other surface is the same. So one, two, three profiles, one to another direction. We knit that together and do a deviation check of that curve. Going from quite a big crease and you can see the, the arrows are nicely converging until they reach this end. Now what happens if I remove that center, this uh, profile here from each? What happens if I go deviation analysis now? I noticed that the edge was converging really quickly um, through to this point. So I thought, oh, maybe that means that um, actually going from convex to concave for a while. So one way to interrogate that, um, sort of amplify those arrows, is to make a ruled surface. So I roll back to this point. Basically created a ruled surface normal to the edge of this surface. And then roll down here. And created this ruled another second ruled surface that's normal to this surface. And if I show both of those ruled surfaces, you can see that they are actually crossing each other about here. So that means from that point onwards, the crease is actually convex, the crease or the edge. So that meant I needed to add um, some more control to stop that happening. Because you don't really want your edge disappearing down here. 
and, and especially you don't want it becoming an any. Yeah, so I'll just reload this part, save me having to repick those sections. Okay, so now if I bring, bring up those ruled surfaces that I talked about, you can see with that intermediate section I added to control the edge, these aren't converging until they get to this point, which is exactly as we want them to go, how, you know, what we want to happen. And there's a fairly nice smooth um, convergence of the angle of the faces. Yeah. And then mirror it across. Hopefully this was useful. I mean, there's a hundred ways to do this. It all depends on what the geometry is. I just kind of tried to guess a few scenarios that might show how you can create disappearing edges or disappearing creases and surfaces. Yep, I hope that was useful. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, then appreciate it if you did. I'll keep making these videos. Yep. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.